What's up, Liron here, and today we're gonna learn how to paint these people a la prima. So what I wanna do today is direct painting. We're gonna paint all of the details in one go, no waiting for it to dry, no glazes, no layers, just putting in all of the values we see, the, the, the um, abstract shapes we see, and try to create a realistic impression. This is a very good exercise. It's not easy, and I'm practicing it too. So what you get to see is me practicing it, and hopefully you can reach your own conclusions. Links to the reference photos in the description box below, as always, and let's get started. Okay, so we'll start first with this uh, reference. Uh, so the emphasis here is on the, again, there is a nice contrast uh, of light and shadow, uh, the woman riding a horse, and what I'm going to try and do is, again, get this very a la prima. The goal here is to practice the technique. The drawing that accompanies it isn't too complex, okay? Uh, and this is how I want to keep it. Uh, but you can definitely take your time a little more with this stage uh, and try to get it to be a little more accurate. I've, I'll probably mess it up in terms of the drawing big time, but that's fine. I don't care about that. In this particular experiment, I'm trying to figure out the technique to get things done in one go. So here is the uh, kind of tank top on the left here. Trying to add the details while making sure it all connects nicely. Okay, not always an easy thing, but with time you get it. And uh, what I'm gonna try and do is paint again in one layer. This is kind of the, I don't know what you'd call this rope thing. And the horse. Now the horse here is kind of the background of the of the painting. It's not gonna be the most important part, but it will help with the contrast uh, with her uh, hand here and her leg and all of that. It's gonna help bring these details out. Okay, so I'm just placing in the main shapes like so, and I think we have enough information. We can actually start uh, painting this. So remember, one go, one layer wet and wet, lifting, everything we need to use, but one layer, we're not gonna glaze this for now, maybe we'll decide to later on, but the goal here is to get this done in one go. So if you notice for the hair, um, it's very dark, but then it has some light spots in it for the, um, the glow of the sun. So I'm gonna mix something that's fairly dark, and I'm not trying again to imitate the colors I see accurately. I will strive to get some kind of an orange because that's what it seems to be. And I'm trying to figure out the where I should leave highlights, okay? It's kind of like uh, negative painting, really. All of it is. Uh, the hair flies up here, so I'm painting around that, okay? So kind of like that. Leaving a couple of gaps here and there. And the funny thing is, again, when you paint like this and you, you don't really... Um, paint what it is, but rather what it looks like. So if it looks like a bunch of highlights next to a bunch of shadows, you'll end up with a result that actually looks like the reference um, very successfully because you don't aim to, again, you paint what you visually see, the shapes, the, the, the abstract shapes that you see. That I find that works best. So here we got the hair, hopefully without overworking it. Now for the skin tone, and it is quite dark compared to what you would imagine it to be, but not as dark. So I'm gonna start with that here. And what I'm gonna do for the right side is I'll leave, um, I'll leave a white highlight, okay? It's gonna be completely white. So, and I added a bit of red to the mix. So this part here of the hand is gonna be completely white around the uh, elbow over here we'll do the shirt really soon okay it's kind of like that now here we have this kind of a dent in the hand very common so you want to make sure you get that in I'm gonna spice it up with a bit of yellow just to keep things moving and a little interesting so here we go and her hand and the shadow on her actual hand now it was the arm now the hand now I'm gonna have a buffer because the the shirt starts here i'm gonna go a little lower than that because the paint is gonna spread out okay that's something really important now we're gonna switch to a really really dark paint maybe even just black you know i got a lot of flack for not using black here we go we're using black so i'm gonna do this here put in the tank top that's darker than the hair by the way so now the hair that looked so far the darkest is gonna be actually lighter 
which is really cool and fun. So here we go, like that. It's nice seeing how your perception of values shifts uh, in accordance with what you get in the reference, you know. So here we go, there is a bit of a highlight on the shirt itself as well, which is, the, again, the shirt is kind of black looking, uh, but there is a highlight on it, so there is obviously some kind of a nuance there, like so. A bit of darker shadows here, and I'm gonna need a bit more water just to keep things moving, because they're a bit stuck. Darken up this area to fix this shape. Uh, here, now here we have a lot of highlights kind of around this area here. The shirt is kind of falling off, draping over the horse. So we're done with this section. Now I want us to work on her leg. And again, I'm going to leave a white highlight on the right. I'm going to use a bit more of a pinkish kind of color here. And remember, we'll be using wet and wet. So here is a good chance to do that. Shirt should get up to here. I'm gonna exploit wet and wet in just a moment, but notice the complex shape around the knee. So we have this line, then we have that kind of thing, goes back and back here. So now, first we can blend the edge. So let's um, wet the brush, dry it, and kind of blend that edge in. Hopefully we did a decent job. And it's nice to have variety. So here it's sharp, here it's blended. Now while this is still wet, we have to quickly put in some more uh, details. So here we go. You see how it disperses and creates that shadow, okay? This is how you paint anything a la prima or first go. You just have to put things in the right timing, okay? And again, I'm just playing around with it now. The goal isn't necessarily, and I won't be able to produce something perfect, but the goal is to challenge me to improve these skills, this skill set in particular. I'm, I'm, I want to give you encouragement to do the same, okay? Uh, you may look at this and think, how the hell can I do all of this kind of complex wash control? It just comes with time, but you have to challenge yourself to at least do and try, try and do these kinds of exercises, okay? So I didn't, I'm, I'm not able to do it because, uh, because of some kind of magic. I just did a lot of these exercises in the past as well. <clears throat> so here is the cloth draping over. Now, once we add some details of the, the horse, it's all going to make more sense. So let's orange the mix up <clears throat> a bit and start putting in the kind of darker details for the horse. We have an ear here and it's not black, so you have to make sure you don't do it completely dark, uh, but it is quite dark, like so. Um, the neck, I'm just trying to figure out now what I did here. So here we go, the hand around the hand here. This part already dried, so I can just work on it. And here now the shirt's gonna pop with the highlight. You can see here a bit of red, a bit of yellow, sorry, to make it a little orange, like so. Now there's a highlight around this um, rope thing, the handle. I don't know what you'd call this. Uh, and here I have to r make it red, like almost... Yeah, I think it, it has to feel a little red, this section. Just to better indicate the colors of the, the color scheme of the horse. So here we go, like that. And again, nothing perfect, really. <clears throat> um, the eye, like so. And as long as you can figure out that's a horse you're looking at, the straps here, like this. That's good enough for me, the bottom of the head. And you can tell what you're looking at, okay? That's the most important part. Now, I'm gonna add, there are a couple of trees here. So a bit of green. It doesn't matter what, again, I'm using the same primary colors. I'm just gonna place that in here. Can you see? Kind of like that. But here is where it's gonna really shine. Because we have a tree that's layered behind some very strong highlights of the and the lighter hand, by the way. So like that. And look at how it brings out the shape of the shirt. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the highlight part, highlighted part of the shirt. And you can see barely anything, but you can tell what you're looking at. Now here on the right, I'm gonna continue this as a scene because I enjoy it so much. Actually, wasn't planning on doing that, but I will. Let me move this side just a little bit. We're gonna create 
a kind of a, a draped background here so we can see the highlights on the horse. So we have this kind of thing here. And here we go like that. And now you can really see the shape of the horse, which is really cool, in my opinion. I love this kind of effect. Now the fields, the crops down there are a little, you know, yellowy, obviously. And a bit of red just to make it a little orange. Sorry, you can't see the mix, it's on the other side of the palette, but you'll have to take my word for it. And kind of putting it like that. Not letting it blend too much. And here we go, you can see I just painted the whole scene a la prima. One go, barely any details. Now you could get some mid values here, because it does seem like the horse has a bit of a... That's green, that's not what I was aiming for, but a bit of a brownish kind of section here. Now I'm starting to get in the danger zone of overworking and doing some... Making some crappy decisions, one moment. So I'm gonna just dab out some of that, I don't need it. Um, and what else is in here? So what I think I would have done a little better is using a bit more red here on her. For the most part I like the look. Uh, I do want to yellow up some of the highlights in the hair. I think they, they look a little better right now. They're very, very white. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that kind of thing here. And this will probably read better as maybe blonde hair. Um, what else? I think here on the horse's body there's quite a lot of uh, these lighter sections here. And of course we could add the very dark shadows, which I didn't yet add because it's kind of impossible wet and wet. Uh, so I said it's gonna be a la prima, but now if just we do a couple of touches here and there, the shape of the horse will be even clearer. Okay, but again this is just final touches if you really want to bring it out. You don't have to do this. And if I would have done it properly in time, maybe it would have looked uh, the same and, and just better and fresher. So after another th second thought, uh, I'll probably not use this space for anything, so let's add a bit of sky. Just to contrast it with all of the, you know, the reds and the oranges and browns, and it will bring out her skin tone, I think, a little better. So here we go, just a bit of sky. Not gonna do everything. Um, kind of like that. Use water to move the the bit of paint you put uh, on the paper. Go like that around her hair and notice how much of a beauty in the color balance you get by doing that. See, it, it really makes the skin tone glow. This was actually really important. After all, you could be a little more gimmicky and grab a bunch of paint and put darker paint close to her. Uh, just to show you, I took the risk of going a little too cliche, but uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, and hopefully this makes sense. Now we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so another example. This is gonna be the last. I just didn't know how complex they're gonna be. And this one ended up being quite complex. So this is just gonna be a dude sitting at the beach. <laughs> so here is the head. And again, I'm using very light lines, very free hand to do th this kind of thing. You do need some experience in, you know, blocking the shapes and making sure it's all at the right spot and kind of measure really uh, roughly and generally. Uh, and I'll probably, again, I don't know if it's gonna be as good as the previous one in terms of you know the drawing, but I'll do my best. So here we have two hands. I'm just drawing where they're gonna be to make sure they connect properly. This is where the pants are gonna be. Leg, kind of like that. And hopefully that makes sense. The arm is going to rest on the leg and the leg is going to be here and he's sitting on something. So, so that's the balance uh, side of it. Hopefully that makes sense. Now what's cool about this example is that his shirt is fairly light. So you'll get to see how this comes into play uh, in the painting. Some highlights here. And once we'll add the beach again, it's going to be beautiful. So we'll start with the head. Left side uh, is the darker side, as you can see. I'm gonna mix a bit of a dark, dark orange for the hair. Leave the highlights like before. I'm squinting my eyes just to uh, dumb it down to the finer details. Now, this is where the hair ends and we get to the uh, back of the neck and the skin tone. So I'm gonna switch to red, just pure red. I feel like I need to overcorrect on the previous example. So. I'm gonna place here kind of a pure red orange maybe. 
maybe let's add a bit more red to it. And this will hopefully read as this is where the skin tone is. Same for the ear. And you can see how it feels a little better. I think this is a little smarter way of doing it. Now the hair is not fully light, so I'm gonna add a bit of a blonde kind of thing to it here on this side and this side as well. And hopefully that makes sense. Again, look at how my colors are messy. They're all over the place. In fact, let me zoom in a bit. So again, I'm just using three primaries and not worrying too much about the rest and it works out nicely. Now I wanna uh, create a mix for the shirt. It's kind of gray. So a bit of uh, red and leftover green is going to do the trick. Now here, there is this line of the sleeve. The sleeve is pretty much in the shadow, so I'm just going to place it in the shadow. And starting to put these shadows on here. Now I, I'll use a bit of water to pull them into the, the center of the shirt. Uh, or maybe blend them, we'll see, I I'm, I'm still haven't decided, but, but I'm just, as long as the shape is connected, I'm, I'm working on it, okay? We have a couple of creases here, a couple of folds in the cloth. Yeah, I'm gonna blend some of the edges, but not all of them. So maybe here, that's a good place to blend. Here as well. And notice how it just pulls it in and creates this very nice interest, I think. Now I'm gonna connect the shirt to the jeans. This is all in the shadow, so I don't need to make any separation. In fact, I'm just gonna go for it. The jeans I'm gonna make a little darker. They're not significantly darker in the reference photo, but I feel like it would be beneficial. So we'll do that kind of thing. And we'll darken them near the bottom. So I got not only French ultramarine, but also a little bit of phthalo blue, which is a little darker inherently. This crease or fold here gonna darken the meeting point between them. I feel like that'll really help the impact of this one. Now here I have to switch to a more of a skin tone but very dark. So I'm gonna use a lot of red, add that to the mix, a lot of this uh, peril in red, and we'll just get started. I'm gonna connect, I should have connected the hand here earlier, just to, now you see I have a break here, but that's fine. Uh, connected here. Now there is a bit of light, so it goes like this, and then there's a stripe of light here. This is a highlight, okay? Um, and I'm gonna continue downwards with uh, the leg, kind of like this. Hopefully I didn't mess up the shape too bad, like so. That's the challenge when doing these kinds of things, that you'd mess up the shape of things, and that's fine, it happens. Uh, but the thing is, if the values are accurate and the drawing is somewhat accurate, you will get something that's pleasing to the eye. Uh, now I want to add a couple of shadows here, just to differentiate the pants from the hand, from the, you know, you see it here? You see, hopefully you see how that works to create that nice separation. Now onto the other side, everything's going to be a little lighter. I'm going to add a lot of yellow and red, because now I, I added a bit of blue. And I know you hate when I contaminate the palette like that, that's just, uh, what do you call this? Um, there's, a, there's a phrase for it that I forgot, but in any case. Uh, that's just a part of the game, so here we go. A bit too dark, so I got rid of some of the uh, paint and water. And now I do want this to be red, so trying to get a bit of a pure red. Here we go. Shadow on the leg, like that. Now you can't see the shape of the leg just yet. You'll see it soon when I'll add the jeans and when I'll add the background, okay? Um, a bit of muted gray for the sleeve here. The Kind of like that, a bit of folds, creases, stuff like here. Now we'll add the jeans, so a bit of blue. And actually you don't see much of them, they're pretty much in the highlight here as well, but I'll, I will add a bit of a shadow like that. And for the leg, only the bottom part is going to show. I'm going to use a bit of a pure red this time for it, because that's the more well lit side, so like this. And hopefully it makes sense. Now let's add the background, which is the sea. They're sitting at the sea. By the way, if you're curious to, uh, as to where I got the reference photos and where I get my reference photos, there's a website called Pixabay. It has tons of royalty-free, free-to-use commercial photos you can use for whatever purpose you want. That's where I got this one, okay? Highly recommend uh, you go there if you need some reference photos. It's just a really good source for them. Uh, the shape of the ear, and especially if you do plan on selling your work, 
uh, it's a good place to check out because you can, okay? Usually you need to read the, the small letters, but usually you can. So here we go, shape of the shoulders right here. Now you'll see how this makes the entire thing pop. Uh, I do want it to be a little happier of a blue, so here we go. I'm adding, I'm adding and subtracting paint and water as I go along. This is just the way to do it. You do wet and wet, you lift, uh, add water to make it lighter or lift. And I do that all the time. Now notice, I can add this kind of a glow here and it's not in the reference photo, it's actually really close to the hand, but it will look good. You see, you don't have to closely follow the reference for it to look good. Now here is the leg that we couldn't see earlier. Here's the hand that we couldn't see its shape clearly earlier. And notice what a beautiful sense of light. I'm gonna green this down the bottom because that's where the C kind of gets close and a bit greener. Here you'll see the shape of this left leg that shouldn't have any glow around it really. So I'm gonna get rid of that. See here? And we've got it. We've got our dude looking at the C and uh, hopefully that makes sense uh, in terms of the process and the uh, alla prima painting. Again, not easy, not an easy technique. You have to have really good um, wash control. I'm gonna add a bit of pure red here or orange just to make it a little clearer what we're looking at. Uh, you need to develop these skills and have them really tight to allow you to work this fast and, and get the details in. But, but once you do, you can see uh, what a beautiful result it can achieve. I'm gonna hold it a little closer to the camera so you can see the details a little better. And also for uh, the second one. And by the way, you can just add a bit of shadow here to anchor this guy to the ground. So a bit of uh, that shadow here because it, it is in the reference photo. I completely forgot about it. Uh, and the rest I think could stay white. It's very light. Uh, but with that, we can wrap this one up. Thank you so much for watching and let's wrap it up face to face. So this is it for this one. This is, in my opinion, the most fun way of doing this. But of course, when you scale your paintings up and they're larger, it's not always as possible to do as in these smaller, uh, smaller examples, but it is very fun. So I wanna thank you so much for watching. Let me know in a comment down below what you thought of this. If you're doing it, I'm really curious to know because this uh, topic isn't discussed much here on YouTube. So I just wanna know uh, if you do this as well and what maybe struggles you're experiencing with it or what else I could elaborate on and develop with this kind of thing. So thank you so much. Don't forget to like this video as always. It really helps me to promote the channel and also subscribe if you are a lurker and you still aren't subscribed and hit the bell button that uh, really helps you get notifications. You'll know about new videos that come out. Thank you so much. We'll see you again in the next vid real soon.